Welcome folks to beautiful St. Denis, Saskatchewan. My name is Dan Pennock. I'm a professor emeritus in the Department of Soil Science at the University of Saskatchewan. And in our video today, we're gonna to be looking at spatial variability of soils at a research site in, uh, in Saskatchewan. What we've done at this site is lay out a square grid, a systematic grid of 25 sampling points. So each one of these flags is one of our sampling points. The spacing is 100 meters by 100 meters. Uh, we can see Christine at one side of our grid and Lee at the other side of the grid, giving you a sense of what 100 meters is in a site. There's 25 meters between each of the flags. And at each of these flags, we took a core that we're going to use to look at the spatial variability of soils at this site. So these are the 25 cores we took with our sampling truck. We took them in a silver core like that one in the far end, which still has one of the samples in it. And then we slid out the sample so you can see the variation in soils associated with it. What we're primarily interested in today is the thickness of this upper organically enriched A horizon. But briefly, you can see some of the other colors the grayish colors associated with high calcium carbonate or lime, and the browner colors associated with a lime-free middle or B horizon. What we've done is arrange them so that the thinnest A horizons are at that end, and the thickest A horizon is at that end. And it gives you a sense of the significant variation in A horizon thickness that can occur even in, within this relatively flat 100 meter by 100 meter grid. Why would this be of importance? For example, if we're looking at the organic carbon content in this area, the thicker the A horizon, the greater the organic carbon content. If we're looking, for example, at plant available nitrogen, again, the thicker the organic material, the more release of nitrogen that can occur from that, and the greater the availability for plant uptake. The cores at this end of the grouping are all relatively thin, about eight or nine centimeters, and in many cases they have calcium carbonate mixed into them. These are soils that have experienced significant erosion due to tillage of the soil. The soil increases in thickness across this side and is reaching eighth A horizon thicknesses of approximately 15 to 20 centimeters, which would be very typical for soils in this area. The soils at that end are significantly thicker. The one at the end is almost 40 centimeters thick versus eight or nine centimeters at this side. That soil is very close to a small wetland at the other side of this grid. It actually has calcium carbonate and some salts right up to the surface. So it's a soil associated with wetlands and hence is much thicker and higher in organic carbon than the soils of these upland areas. Overall then, it gives us a very clear sense of the very significant variation in A horizon thickness that can occur even in a very small area. And the question that we're looking at in this course is, how can we capture this variation in the most efficient manner? 25 cores in 100 meter areas is very difficult for the most part. And instead what we need is a much more efficient way to capture this variability and to characterize it. 